Welcome to the Capital Discussions Option View Education Webinar Series. I'm Tom Nunnemaker, our guest James Hogan from Option View Systems International. Uh, before we get started, a quick disclaimer that Capital Discussions is not a broker dealer or an investment advisor. This presentation is for educational purposes only. We don't know your situation and have no way of knowing what level of risk is appropriate for you. We're not making any specific trade recommendations. The risk of loss in trading options can be substantial, so please be aware of all of your risks prior to placing any trades. Hypothetical computer simulated trades are believed to be accurately represented, however, actual profit or loss may vary due to market factors such as liquidity, slippage, and commissions. And again, this is for educational purposes only. So with that out of the way, I'll uh, pass the ball over to you, James. Uh, welcome. It's been a while since we've seen you here. No, well, yeah, thank you. I'm glad to be here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk today um, about um, option view and why uh, people come to option view. Um, the questions I get the most and what people are looking for when they, when they come. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen here. And uh, you're going to see option view. And when yep. you first get, yep, awesome. So when you first get option view, uh, this is kind of your, 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 your home starting page here. Um, you can totally really, really customize option view to, to how you want to use it. Uh, when you first download a, a trial or download option view, um, you're going to see, uh, it'll say like account one up here, and you can actually create an unlimited number of accounts. Uh, you know, when you can, when I click on this button here, you can see all the different accounts I've had. Um, what people will do is they'll have uh, back testing accounts that you can set up, um, uh, accounts uh, for the different brokerage accounts you have perhaps. Um, and what's kind of nice is when, you know, we have people come over and I show them this feature and um, this is where this info button here is where you would come and open up a new account. You just hit new account. You can get rid of them just as easy. But what's nice is if you had, you know, maybe uh, different brokerage accounts, um, you can actually create what's called a super account in option view where you wouldn't be able to make any uh, changes to that account. But what you're doing is you're linking all your accounts together so that you can see the big picture. Um, and uh, that's kind of nice because then you can see what your whole entire, you know, uh, portfolio uh, data is. If you wanted to, uh, you can actually create hedges um, for uh, your entire portfolio if you wanted to. So that was the info button. And then this status button, if you had a super account, would show all of your positions here and it gives you all of this you know information it's going to show you the total large big picture value uh what your portfolio delta and theta is and you can even create a beta delta base if you wanted to uh, create a hedge for your entire position over a certain period of time um, that's one of the things that i kind of point out to people that people don't necessarily come to option view for but um, one of the added uh, benefits that you can uh, uh, use option view for um, so, but again, under this info button, another thing that people, one of the big questions I get a lot is that people come to option view because they're usually trading, you know, uh, uh, some complex, uh, uh positions, uh, butterflies or brokering butterflies or variations of, of those types of income generating trades. And what they want to do is they want to have a campaign style, uh, trade going on where they're consistently putting these trades on, um, and managing them, uh, through adjustments and everything like that. And this is the biggest button that you're going to want to press right here uh, is to include previously realized gain losses. So if you check that off here, then when you're modeling trades and going forward, it's going to be recording and building uh, uh, profits and, and, and including losses and adjustment costs and everything like that in your uh, ongoing, uh, just say broken wing butterfly campaign. Okay, so this is the biggest uh, thing right here um, that uh, people that are, are, are trading those types of strategies are looking for. Okay, um, so that was the, uh, the info button right there that uh, I selected there. The other thing that uh, when people first get started uh, going with OptionView, uh, they talk about is there's usually some settings questions that they uh, that need to be addressed. Um, one of the uh, biggest things right here at the very beginning is slippage. Uh, a slippage by default, uh, Len Yates, the, the president and programmer of OptionView, has this set to small. Um, so when people are modeling and they're saying, hey, you know, uh, for some reason I, I converted this trade and, and my P&L is a little bit less than I thought it would be um, when I put this on, um, or you got filled at a different price that you thought you were going to get filled at, well, slippage basically is adding a little bit um, uh, worse of a fill than just the pure market price. So if you had slippage set to none, you're getting 
uh, filled at the market price. And also over here, down on the lower uh, right of this default models window, you can see this is how Option View is calculating the market price. Um, some people prefer to change this to however their brokerage they're using uh, is calculating the, their market price. It might be a little bit simpler of, a, of an uh, average that they're using. Okay, but this is the default for option view, just a smoothed out average for the market price. So I usually say, you know, unless you really want to be conservative in your uh, back testing or modeling of trades, um, I recommend slippage set to none. Okay, just so you, uh, you know where that is here. Okay, and again, that was under settings, and that was default models. The other thing is um, the default auto strike. Uh, under settings here, and this brings it up. So you can customize, you know, what strike ranges you're using. I don't do a lot of in the money uh, uh, trading, so that's why I have my in the money set to small. I'm always looking out of the money, so I have these set to large. Um, the default setting is use natural strikes. Uh, I prefer to see all the strikes they're trading. Um, what happens is further out in time uh, in different underlines, you'll have strikes that don't start trading until they get closer to expiration. Um, and so what natural strikes does is it tries to create uh, an options chain matrix for you that uh, doesn't have any blank spaces, so to speak. So um, a lot of the strikes that are trading in the weeklies, for example, might be eliminated if you have natural uh, interval selected. So I usually recommend uh, people moving right away to display all strikes. You can always go back and change this if you want to. And then also over here, uh, this is not defaulted. So if most people these days are looking at weeklies. Um, if you want to have weeklies displayed uh, right away, you're going to want to come over here and select this, include weeklies if available. And then anytime you open up uh, an options chain matrix for any underlying, and if it does have weeklies, uh, they'll show up for you. Okay. And then the uh, other only uh, preferences uh, over here, we'll take a look at preferences really quick. There's a lot of things you can uh, come in here and customize. Um, one of the things that I like to look at uh, or recommend is when you look at a volatility chart. This has gotten popular over the past year and a half, two years, um, where people are looking at uh, percentiles. What percentile is this underlying in, in terms of its implied volatility um, relative to where it's been over a certain time period in the past? I, two years is, is my recommendation. Some people will do a year. Um, some people may, may do further back. Um, but this is kind of nice because you can, you know, when you're looking at a volatility chart, you can quickly look and see where it is at uh, in respect to its uh, statistical or historical volatility and its implied volatility relative to where it's been, you know, uh, over the last two years. So you can say, oh, right away, wow, this, these, uh, this, these options are, are really undervalued right now. Um, really good for finding candidates uh, if you're looking to sell or buy options. Uh, based on this volatility percentile. Uh, the other thing uh, is uh, this fonts. I kind of recommend people right away just go to use the eight point font. Um, really much easier to, to, to see um, uh, break even points on the graphic analysis. I'll show you that in a little bit. And then the other thing is for the actual graphic analysis, um, there's when you first open up uh, a risk graph, if you're modeling a position, um, I like to look at where I'm at today. Um, it defaults to look at expiration, okay? So this is where you would make that change if you want to be looking at today right away. And then also, um, when you're looking at uh, your, your risk graph and you're seeing different timelines, you can have it displayed as dates or actually displayed as today plus a certain number of days in the future. Okay, so those are the biggest things. Um, but in preferences, there's a lot to go in here and look at and, and customize if you if you decide to do that. Okay. Um, so again, I said you this is a, kind of our homepage. We call this the quotes display. You can actually you know enter uh, anything you want to in here. Uh, Option view uh, looks at uh, basically everything on the U.S. Uh, exchanges. Uh, so you're going to be able to look at futures trades. Um, or, equities, indexes, you know, and all the options that go along with them, you can uh, uh, backtest as well if you have BackTrader with all this data. So it's, it's kind of cool. It's, uh, the equities uh, stuff is, is out there a lot for, for some different platforms to do backtesting in, but really um, to do backtesting in futures and things like that, we kind of uh, are the only guys uh, in the game for that. So, um, But when you have a, uh, a symbol over here, what you can do is uh, – 
when you first get option view, it's going to be preloaded with some, some symbols just so there's something here. But you can always uh, just left click on uh, the symbol and hit the insert button to create a blank field. Um, and then you can, uh, you know, type in whatever you want to. Uh, and then it'll, you know, populate right there. Um, highlighting it and delete the delete button on your keyboard gets rid of it just as easy. Okay. Um, with option view, there's always a couple ways to do the same thing. So that was uh, how you would do it um, using the delete and insert button on your keyboard. But you can always come up to this little button right here with the three lines on it. And this is where you can insert rows, delete rows. You can also do the same thing with the columns across here. Okay. If you have a watch list somewhere, um, maybe in Excel, um, if you had a, a number of symbols, you could always just you know left click here and high, copy them uh, from Excel and paste. Uh, those symbols in and they'd all populate right here if you want to do something like that. Okay. Um, as far as these column headings here, you can also customize these as well. Um, one of the ones I kind of I, I recommend that's not uh, a default is DVO. This is pretty cool. It's uh, dollar volume of options traded on a, on a five-day average. Um, so you can quickly see how liquid something uh, is if you have this column. And again, you would be able to insert a column here. It would be blank. And then you could right-click on that column. And these are all the available column headings. Okay. Um, I always like to make sure there's a time column. Um, that way, you know, I, I, there's never a question if I'm looking at real-time data or if I'm looking at data from two days ago, uh, if I'm in back trader or something like that. But a time column I recommend. Uh, this DS is data source. It says where my quotes are coming. Um, if you had Thinkorswimmer, Interactive Brokers, or eSignal, um, you can get live quotes from those brokerages into Option View. It would uh, represent that, uh, it would reflect that over here. Okay. Another popular one is earn, earnings date. Option View is gathering uh, earnings date information. So if you have this column in here, um, you can always. Um, change that back to DVO. You can always see right away when the next earnings announcement is. Um, definitely important if you're trading options to know when the something's announcing earnings. And you can see this next one for this uh, CyberArk software is on uh, August 10th after the market closes. And BMO would mean before the market opens. Okay. Uh, one other thing I want to touch on uh, down here is that you can create an unlimited number of tabs down here. So you can have, you can see I have a, a tab. This is what I'm looking at usually during the day. But if you had a futures uh, that you wanted to look at, you can see here's all my futures I have listed out here. Okay. And then I have ETF sectors. So uh, to create a new tab, you just right click on it. And then you can manage the tabs, delete tabs, and, and insert a new tab. And you could name it whatever you want it to. Okay. So, okay. So let's go back to the home tab here. Okay, um, I'm just going to pull up a, a volatility chart really quick. This is one of the things that people come to Option View for is they really like uh, to look at our historical volatility information we have. Uh, I'm just going to left click on Apple here, highlight it, and I'm going to go to price chart. Okay, and then I'm going to hit this button and it's going to overlay my volatility information. Okay, so right away, if you look at the top, because I have my percentile set to two years, right now the implied volatility for Apple is in the 28th percentile. Okay, uh, so that means uh, it, basically it's it's uh, relatively low, uh, not super low, but uh, relatively low. As you can see, uh, historically it's been been higher, but um, it's been uh, um, you know higher than where it's at right now. 72% uh, uh, of the time over the last two years, okay? And it's about uh, at the 50 percentile uh, for statistical volatility, okay? So you can also left-click in this price uh, chart, volatility chart, and for any particular day, if you look down at the very uh, bottom of this chart, you can see the information changing as I drag it to the right. So you can see exactly where it was at uh, for any day in the past as well. Okay, um, let's go ahead and um, talk about Backtrader for just a second. So if you wanted to do some backtesting, this is one of the predominant reasons uh, people will come there. Maybe, uh, maybe they've been trading they options for a long time or, or they're just getting started. Either way, uh, they're definitely going to want to do some backtesting if they're looking at a new strategy to trade. And what you would do is you would just come under the Info button, 
Okay, you could create a new account. Okay, I'll go ahead and create a, a little test account here. Name it whatever you want to. You can say, uh, don't worry about any of these right now. We talked about uh, a super account before, um, but you're not going to make it, uh, this a super account until you, you wouldn't create a super account unless you had a lot of, uh, uh, a couple accounts with a lot of information already uh, preloaded into that. Um, but just say, uh, name your account. When do you want this account to start? And so for reporting purposes, um, if you're doing a strategy back test, you're going to want to use uh, a capital amount where you're going to be using most of the capital or all of the capital ideally um, uh, for the trading. And the reason being is that because the reports, you know, uh, how well your trading is doing is going to be based on uh, that, uh, the capital that's in that account. So if you're going to be doing butterflies using uh, $10,000 or $5,000, um, you, you want to start to, uh, that trade trying to maximize the use of all the capital in that account. Uh, it just generates nice reports that way. Um, so let's just say we wanted to start this account. You can go back you know, as far as 2001 if you really wanted to. Uh, that's how far, far back we've been storing uh, uh, data every half an hour. Uh, actually, before 2017, we have every half an hour. Just starting this year, uh, we're gathering every 15 minutes now. So that's just something uh, uh, that's uh, newer this year. Um, and so let's just say you wanted to go back to January 1st, 2014. Um, it doesn't, uh, uh, like I said, you can go back any, any date you want uh, uh, after uh, 2001. And then you can say, okay, I'm going to start this account with $5,000. You just hit OK and my new account has been started, okay? And you can see I'm in that account. So now what you can do is you come in here and you can type in a date. Um, you can use our calendar uh, button here. Uh, let's just say I went to 152014 um, and just hit enter. It's gonna bring us back to that date. Now I can see it's a Sunday. It's updating right now and you're gonna see now we're looking at all these quotes for this particular date and time, which is the close. Uh, let's go back. Let's go to Monday, so we'll go to actual trading day. So this is the close on January 6, 2014, and now the entire option view system thinks that it's this date and time. Okay, um, so now you could go ahead and you would jump into uh, an options chain. Let's just see let's see where Apple was at. This is before uh, it split, obviously, and now we've got an options chain up. Okay. Um, really important is you want to have a trade and existing position column in your uh, matrix. Uh, reason being is that if you're going to model a trade, um, you would type in a positive 5 there um, or a, a minus 5 means you're short that position. Okay, um, and so you can see down here you've got uh, what the requirements be, would be for this trade. And then if I go ahead and convert this trade, it moves over to the existing position column. You're never going to type in this existing position column. Um, if you wanted to close this trade out, you would put the opposite trade in. Okay, and so now that I've converted this trade, I've actually created a record of it. Okay, so you can see this is what I bought for. This is my price. These were my commissions. Okay. Um, under the info button, let me just touch on that real quick again. This is where we created our account. This is where you're going to be able to change your commissions if you want to. So it reflects accurately what your brokerage is, is uh, charging you. Um, so once I have this trade on, now you can you know, analyze it and see what it looks like. Okay. Um, this is going to show you where your break even is. Um, today I have uh, T plus zero is where I'm starting at right here. Okay, so this is where you can see um, this is today when I put this trade on. Okay, and what's nice about it now is you can do, I could step through time now. I can go by every half an hour with this S button, or I could go by day if I want to skip ahead to the next day. Uh, the kind of neat thing that you can do is you can do a side-by-side, -side, and this is kind of what people like uh, when they're doing back testing. And to do side-by-side -side, uh, analysis, what you need to do is you need to make sure you restore down your matrix. Okay, and then you kind of resize it here. This arrow will always bring you to the current trade you have on. Um, and then I can hit the side-by-side -side button. Okay. And what you can do now is this is going to update as I move through time. 
Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump ahead, you know, to the next uh, 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 eight days out here. I'm going to go to the next Tuesday, and we'll be able to see where I'm at. You can see it's updating here. It's gathering the data. Boom. And then Apple made a move uh, up a little bit, but my uh, theta is uh, killing me on this one because it's not moved, didn't move up fast enough for me. So, um, so this is so this is how you can back test. You can step through time. Now that was a losing trade. I didn't want to do that. Now what you can do and say I would have taken it off. You hit this create closing trade button. Okay, it puts the closing trade in for you, or you could type them in manually, and then I'll convert that trade, and boom, it's like I, uh, it's, I totally uh, closed that trade out now. So this, you would do this over and over again if you had a particular strategy and were making adjustments and things like that. But I just wanted to touch on, on a back trader and how you would do it. Um, and so now, let's go back to trade log. Another thing I get right away is let's say people did a trade, uh, and they converted it, but they don't want it anymore. Or they actually, uh, maybe they were not back trading, but actually put a trade on and they want to watch it live in option view. You can actually change the prices you got filled at. So let's say I really got filled at, you know, 514. You can change that. Okay. Um, but if you want it, you can change your commissions too. If you want to get rid of a trade um, and maybe uh, do it over or it was a mistake, you can just delete the date. And now I hit OK, and it's like I never had that trade on or, or converted that trade. Okay, so now you can see my trade log is blank, and now I can start over again if I wanted to. Okay, so that's one of the big things is how to get rid of a trade, uh, how to start a back test. Uh, that's how you would do it there. Um, the other thing I get, uh, I'm going to get out of back trader now. And to do that, you just hit this red X up here. Okay, and now it's going to bring up Apple right now today where the uh, options chain is. Let me close this and let me just go ahead and go back into uh, Apple again here. And then, so what I wanted to show you guys also is if this is not defaulted, um, you will have a all white options chain matrix here when you first start. If you hit this S button, this will bring in the coloration. The standard deviations is what this is showing. Uh, this darker uh, pink line here is showing you uh, right away where the at the money is. And then you have a standard deviation in either direct, uh, either uh, uh, in the money, on the money here. And then the blue gives you the second standard deviation. When you're out into the white, you're looking at third standard deviation out here. Okay. So while we're in the matrix, the other kind of thing is, that I get is uh, you can always change these column headings here. Um, one of my favorite things that I like to show people that I use a lot is uh, this third column here. Um, it's looking at theoretical price. And a lot of people come to option view because of the modeling. It's going to have um, more accurate uh, theoretical pricing uh, than what a lot of brokerages offer out there. So um, you can look at uh, option view's theoretical price. Let me just hit the number one button here. This is going to bring me to my, my default. So I have my theoretical price here. And then what this button does, percent overvalued or undervalued, really what it's doing is it's looking at the market price and looking at option view's theoretical price uh, and comparing them, the two and saying, okay, uh, this option right now, if we're looking at the uh, 155 call on Apple, it's saying that uh, market price is this, um, theoretical price, this is, now it's flat again, now it's showing again. So it's 6% overvalued right now, okay? And so when I'm designing a trade or a spread, I'll use this a lot to, to try to, you know, buy low and sell high. If I can find, you know, something that uh, is uh, undervalued, uh, you know, want to definitely buy that one and I'll just do a, a credit or a vertical spread. Um, and uh, you, sometimes, a lot of times, you can get you know five, six percent getting in that trade. And when if if you're able to get filled those price, those prices, when things coming back in line to where they should be, you're you know a few percent ahead of the game already. Okay, so that's why I like using this percent OU uh, column here. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and right click on this again just to kind of show you. Uh, these are all the parameters you can have for column headings. Okay, you can have your Greeks. Okay, you can have um, the quote that uh, information that's coming in the last bid ask market price, um, volume, open interest. Okay, 
Um, the other cool thing about Option View is that if you want to see the details about a particular option, all you have to do is double click anywhere in that row um, that that option is in. It's going to tell you all this information right away. Okay. Um, so let me go ahead and put a mock trade on here again. And let's just say I was looking to do um, a vertical here uh, and a debit spread. And we're going to go ahead and analyze it. Okay. And let me go out a week and analyze another one. Okay. And now I can isolate this trade for analysis by left clicking on this weekly two here. Okay. So now I'm just looking at this trade and I can analyze this one. And so what a lot of people will come here uh, to option view for and to model trades and propose trades to find the best trade they can is now you can start superimposing different trades over one another. And they're color coded. You can see exactly uh, what trade you're looking at uh, up here in the uh, center left um, of the uh, uh, graphic analysis is showing the positions you're, you're looking at here. So it really helps you zero in on uh, which trade is going to be the best uh, best for you uh, by by being able to superimpose these different uh, proposed trades over one another. Okay, um, it'll you know it keeps saving them for you. If you want to delete one, you could always hit the delete button here. Okay, and now you're looking at this one by itself, and you're looking at this one separately, um, and then you can again superimpose them if you want to. Okay, and it saves a bunch of them. So if you wanted to even throw another one on, you can go ahead and look at it, and you can say, okay, I really want to do this trade instead of this trade. So now I'm just going to come in here and delete these out, uncheck this, and now you can say, okay, I just want to look at this trade. You could convert it if you wanted to, um, and then track it going forward. Or, you know, I usually recommend um, if you're actually going to put this trade on, go ahead and, and uh, put it on your brokerages. Once you get filled over there, come back and convert the trade in Option View. Um, and then you can uh, change the prices. Uh, the nice uh, in the trade log, if you want to put in exactly what you got filled at. Uh, the nice thing, if you have an account with Thinkorswim or uh, under the trade log button, you can actually import your trades uh, from Thinkorswim. So it would pull in exactly uh, the correct information that you uh, put that trade on with. Um, the other cool thing is that you can actually send trades uh, to Thinkorswim now. Um, under the Info button again here, if you configure this Trade button, you can come here and say Send Trades to Thinkorswim. So if you had this trade right here and I hit this Trade button, um, basically what it's going to do, it's going to go ahead and uh, open up your Thinkorswim platform and you're going to have that uh, be able to uh, make a couple clicks and you're going to have that trade ready to go for execution on the Thinkorswim side. Okay. Um, so that is uh, the matrix and analysis, graphic analysis uh, there in a nutshell. Um, what the other thing I wanted to share is that, uh, you know, people will come and they really want to scan for some good trades, use option views, modeling and volatility information. Uh, to help them find the best trade. Um, we talked about the volatility charts a little bit. Uh, what's really cool is that we've got this survey feature, which is really looking at our price and volatility charts. Um, all of the information we've, we've got stored on those price and volatility charts can be accessed through survey. Um, and what you can do is you can you know, scan for something right now that is in the highest IV percentile um, that trades, and you can sort them based on which ones uh, have the greatest dollar volume options traded or the highest DBO. We talked about that earlier. You can also say, I only want to look at stocks that are uh, trading between a certain price range. Um, and then you can see there's the two-year percentile history that I like to use. Okay, You can do uh, futures-based stocks, ETFs, indexes. Let's just say we want to look at stocks right now. Um, that have the current, the highest current IV percentile, and they have the, they're the most liquid for options trading. Now I'm going to hit go. Um, yep, go on this one, and boom, you can see it pulls it up really quickly. Okay. Now you can see there's a lot of action going on with these uh, um, retailers, uh, grocery stores, uh, whatnot, because Amazon just uh, 
uh, bought Whole Foods, so that's causing a shake up there. But this is, and that's causing, you know, because there's some big, uh, big price moves uh, happening. You can see where the highest implied volatility is right now. Okay, but again, they're sorted on greatest dollar volume of options traded, so they're traded. They're sorted right here by this. Okay, um, if you wanted to sort them based on highest IV uh, percentile, we could do that too and hit go. Okay, and now you can see over here. It's going to shake things up a little bit because now it's just looking at these super high implied volatility levels. Okay, so basically it's at its highest it's been in the past two years is what these these are showing you right here. Okay, um, and then you can see what the DBO is here. Um, if you wanted to do some analysis and see what's going on with this, you could highlight this here. Just left click on it, hit the insert button. Okay, I can close this and you can see it pulled in, it, it put that symbol over here, so now I can jump into an options chain and just left clicking on it here. Okay, and now you can see we've got some really high implied volatilities. Again, clicking on survey again. So this is kind of neat. So you can, you know, do uh, ratios, highest IB to SV. That means you've got a really high IB uh, and a low uh, historical volatility or statistical volatility. Um, it's also kind of fun just to click on this and say, you know, what stocks have the greatest dollar volume options traded, okay? Um, and you can see uh, over here what we've got going on right now. Okay. So this is just going to show you what the most liquid options uh, markets are, what underlines. Uh, so that's a uh, survey. What a lot of people do is they'll use survey to find the candidates, uh, implied volatility characteristics and uh, price range and, and uh, liquidity they're looking for. Um, and then they might go further and design a trade around that information, uh, maybe using Trade Finder. Okay. Uh, what Trade Finder does is Trade Finder is using uh, the options chain information that you have loaded in Option View. Okay, so the key to Trade Finder is to make sure you have a, a a matrix open. Okay, and then you go to Trade Finder and you can say, I want to look for. I'm just going to click this number one button, which brings in what I'm looking at. Um, and then you can say, this is. I'm looking at Apple now. I have a target. Let's just say we think you know this will pull in the price right now. Let's just say you think Apple is going to 155. Um, you can put a date in here. You think it's going to happen within the next 60 days, okay? And then if you add strategies, these are all the strategies uh, that you can choose that option view will use. You've got verticals, diagonals, just long options, short options, butterflies, condor, straddles. Um, any of these you can check off. Uh, I'm going to clear, deselect all right now. Let's just say I want to look at some verticals, okay? Um, if you click on goals, it's going to try to maximize uh, all the capital you provide in the trade. Okay, so let's just say I want to do 5000 on this trade. I'm going to go over here. I want to make sure there's open interest, okay? Um, and that's a, a – it starts eliminating uh, bad prices really far out of the money if you put open interest uh, – some open interest level in here, okay? I also recommend for you doing Trade Finder is to keep it as broad as possible get some results, and then start adding some parameters back like minimum days to buy or sell and uh, max days to buy and sell, things like that. Um, because that way, if you uh, get results having a really broad scan and then I'll start zero, narrowing it down um, and it gets stuck somewhere, you know there's, there was a mistake in one of the parameters or that one parameter you changed is causing uh, Trade Finder to not find any results for you. Okay, and then you've got the, also got this filters to tab where you can say, you know, uh, minimum maximum standard deviations to sell uh, or minimum probability of profit that you want it to look for, okay? Um, so based on this information, I'm just doing a general one. I'm going to hit go here. And it's going to go ahead and, and based on the time frame and the price target, it's given me, you know, uh, all these best case returns right here, okay? So based on, let's go ahead and click on this one. And then I can send this trade right into the matrix if I wanted to and analyze it that way. Or you can quickly analyze it right here, and you can see here's my target line that I created, okay? And so based on my target, it's saying that if it does hit that, um, and this is my 
maximum projection date, which is 60 days out, these are the profit levels I'll be at. Okay, so when I use TradeFinder, a lot of times it might not be the exact trade ID I do, or um, it just kind of puts you on the right track. And, and because uh, Option View is has its variable modeling, what it's also doing, and we talked about that percent overvalued, undervalued options, TradeFinder is going to zero in on those for you right away, um, and try to give you that edge up on a trade uh, by creating one where it's you know you're going to you know buy low and sell high, especially if it's uh, uh, that a particular option is uh, overvalued or undervalued based on comparing, you know, the, the market price to option views theoretical price. Okay. Um, so that's TradeFinder, pretty robust. Uh, I use that a lot and talk about it a lot. The other thing, uh, Tom actually asked me to touch on OpScan. Okay. OpScan is an add-on module uh, for Option View. Um, you can get the Option View Essential subscription, and I'll show you where to find this information in, in a few minutes. But uh, OpScan is an add-on. Uh, you can either, if you get an Option View Essential subscription, you can either get uh, that subscription with Backtrader or OpScan. Um, if you had uh, Backtrader and Option View, uh, OpScan would be a, an add-on. And what this does is it has its own server. So it goes, doesn't matter where your data source is coming from, uh, OpScan goes to its own server and cycles through uh, all the options that are out there and comes back with uh, results for you based on a formula that you have preloaded in Option View that maybe I've sent to you um, or uh, you've created. It's very, very customizable. Okay. Um, one of the, here's uh a formula here. It's going to be fat call premiums on quiet stocks. What this is looking for is it's going to be looking for something that's got uh, really low statistical volatility, um, and then it's got uh, high implied volatility. So that means you know you're going to find things that have um, uh, uh, a lot of premium to to sell if you wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. I'm just going to show you what the formula looks like. Okay. Um, I'm going to click this modify button so you can see it. And the parameter guide is available on our website on, on how to create these formulas. But basically what it's looking for, you can see SV is looking for a low SV, under 30. Okay. And then it's looking at, um, at the money uh, volatility levels. Um, it's sorting them by IV minus SV um, and then showing this information current IV, okay. Um, so uh, the only limitations of it is that you, and hopefully this is changes in the future, but you can currently only uh, look at one option and one underlying parameters. Um, hopefully in the future you're able to look at two options against one another, be able to compare two options. You can't do that right now. So it's uh, difficult to uh, uh, scan for like the best vertical uh, debit spread or, or best calendar uh, because you can only look at one option at a time when you're doing op scan. Okay. Um, the, you're also only going to want to run one scan. You don't want to do a scan like start clicking on all of these together and then uh, running them all at the same time. You don't want to do that. You want to have anything you want to look for built into that existing uh, uh, formula. Okay, here's one straddle strangles. Uh, low IV going up. Okay, so this is if you are, you know, you want to buy options. You're looking for something that has low IV. Okay, and it's going to find the best uh, 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 candidates to to put a strangle or, or a straddle on because uh, it's because low uh, low IV is, is so this, the IV level is so low and it has been on the rise that those uh, those options are going to gain uh, go momentum. Okay. Uh, Titus Markets is the formula that Steve created. Uh, Steve Lentz created. It's basically just showing you um, things that have really tight bid asks uh, spreads. Uh, you know, usually penny spreads. Uh, so you're not going to get much slippage when you uh, trade anything that comes up in this uh, scan here. Okay. Um, a lot of times we'll have people that come and they're using OpScan and they're looking for spikes in open interest. Um, you know, so they might say, uh, I want to find an underlying that, um, you know, has perhaps uh, trading within this price range. Um, and then you can say, um, I'm looking for uh, something over the last five day average or 
30 day average or, or 60 day average. I want to see something where uh, open interest has jumped uh, 20% over that last average, like immediately. So what it'll do is it'll bring you attention to maybe some large orders that are, are going in on, on generally quiet stocks. So, you know, some people are looking for to, you know, jump on the heels of, uh, or on the coattails of somebody that maybe knows something. Um, they'll use uh, OpScan for that. They'll also use OpScan for uh, naked selling. Um, uh, just go out and buy an option that's uh, really overvalued that they want to sell. Another thing is that, um, really good for covered calls um, because you can look for an underline perhaps that is uh, just trending or um, or, or kind of heading to the downside and you want to write a call option against uh, your uh, underlying position. Very good for finding those types of, of, of trades. Uh, but again, like I said, you cannot compare two options against one another with, with, uh, with OpScan. And we're available to help you if you need help. Uh, designing any any trades. I'll go ahead and run one real quick for you guys. Uh, let's just run this uh, straddles uh, low IV going up. I always want to make sure I deselect all, then I select this one, and then I hit go. And again, it's going to its own server that we have, gathers that formula, saves all your scans for you that you've done, and then I can click on this. And now you can see that it's coming up with this list here. Okay, shows you the last price of the underlying, okay, where the IV is at now, where its average IV is at over the last five days, what its current statistical volatility is, and what the high has been over the last 800 days, okay, and the average total 20-day uh, 20, uh, 20 average total dollar volume of options traded. So, um, so these are things you might want to put a straddle on because uh, it's the IV is low and trending higher. OpScan does not work in back trader mode. Just so you know, I get that question a lot. OpScan just has its real-time server and works off its own uh, data collecting. Okay. Um, some of the, the newer features, uh, we're always putting versions of Option View out there and adding, uh, adding features. Um, some of the, the Len's actually working on a, on a new uh, model right now. Um, you can, let me go ahead and jump into Apple here. He's working on a new pricing model. This is uh, Option View's variable model that we use. Um, EIOIO is a model that uh, Thinkorswim uses. Um, and then you have a, a uniform model. There's going to be an additional model you're going to be able to choose from. Uh, all the details will be coming out about that one. Uh, we're always trying to get more accurate um, with uh, option pricing modeling, um, you know, to better anticipate uh, where you're going to be if uh, the market takes a sharp decline or, uh, and, and things like that. Um, There are some add-ons in Option View. Um, we have an earnings module. I'll talk about that really quick. Um, and what you can do, let me find something that's got earnings coming out uh, relatively soon. I know we're at the tail end of it. Um, but let's just say we wanted to look at uh, Apple. We'll stick with the Apple thing we've got going on today. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, double-click on Apple. And then what I can do is I can look at when I'm doing earnings plays or looking for earnings play, what I like to do, I'm going to clear this trade out here, is uh, I like to always make sure I open a price chart and a volatility chart so that I've got current information in. And now I'm going to click on this model button. I'm going to click on this volatility tab here. And this is something that uh, Len put a lot of work into. Okay, um, And so it knows when our uh, next uh, earnings date is. Okay. And it's it's pretty far out here, July 26th, and there it's out way out here. Let's see. So it looks like the weekly four out here in July is when uh, we're at the estimated uh, earnings date where it would be happening. Okay, you can always kind of glance at a glance and tell where that earnings announcement or where the market thinks that earnings date is going to be happening because if you look at the implied volatility here, is that the money 17.6? 17.8, 18, kind of a, a normal structure, you know what I mean? 
Um, and then you've got, um, it looks like a, a, a jump out here. Uh, it might not actually be until, looks like it might have to define some more, some more uh, options here. Um, but basically, what it does is it's going to model the volatility crush that's going to happen. So this is the volatility, three-year volatility count. And, you know, four times a year during the earnings season, this current, this is where the current volatility level is at, will start to creep up to this level up here. Four times a year it does that because that's what's happening uh, during earnings season is uh, the implied volatility is increasing. Um, and then as soon as the earnings announcement is over with, uh, all the volatility comes out and it drops back down to the bottom of this cone. Okay. And so when you get close to earnings, uh, this is uh, kind of the, the, the tool you're going to want to look at and use uh, to estimate if you're going to put an earnings play on where you're going to be right after that announcement. Okay. Uh, we do have an add-on on an earnings module that uh, Len has created. Uh, it's kind of cool. You can find a lot of information, at, information about it at our website. But we've got, uh, you can see over here, we've got E primes, E overs, um, pairs, echoes, and runners. Those are all strategies that come with the earnings module that uh, every Monday morning, uh, if you have the module, it asks you if you want to run the uh, earnings report module. And you hit yes, go ahead. And based on your characteristics and uh, basically what Len is doing is, is using our historical uh, database uh, to run his algorithms to say, um, over the past two years, um, this, these are the trades that are, are the best to, boot, to do straddles on. These are the best to do calendars on. Um, these are the ones that uh, move uh, when another underlying announces. Um, so really cool. I recommend uh, uh, checking that out on our website. I'm actually going to take you to our website here real quick. Um, and just uh, show you how to navigate around uh, the different things you can look about. Under trading is where you're going to find out about the earnings module. I've done a video uh, there. You can look into it more, and so is Len. Um, our VXX trading system is an add-on um, that's been doing fantastic, and it's pretty cool to check out. Here's where you learn more about OpScan and where you're going to find uh, the parameter guide at the bottom of this window. If I click on this here, um, you're going to be able to find out more about it. And down here is where you can download uh, uh, the parameters on, and, and that you would use to create your own formulas. Okay. Uh, other important se uh, section of our website is the support page here. This is our online manual, so you can you know dive into that and uh, learn tons of stuff. I go there all the time. You can actually search for. Uh, the matrix in option view, and it'll give you all uh, a different number of different topics you can read about uh, about uh, the matrix if you wanted to. Okay, um, this brings you to our YouTube channel where there's tons of videos on there um, about and demos of option view, similar to what we've done today, um, but maybe more uh, targeted towards uh, just the scanning tools or just back testing. Or um, there's other educational videos on there too about. Uh, different strategies, and it's all going to be with people using Option View. Um, our store, let me go back to Option View here. Pricing, this is where you can see all the subscription plans. Um, you know, usually uh, people will have an account with Interactive Brokers, Thinkorswim, or eSignal because it's a huge savings in the cost of getting Option View if you can have an account with one of them because um, you can get their real time data without having to, to pay, um, you know, uh, our pricing for real-time data, which we have to buy from someone else and supply. Okay. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover, unless there's some... Uh, yeah, I don't see any questions. Questions out there. Anything else you want me to talk about, Tom? Uh, no, I think you did a good job covering everything. Um, again, I don't see any questions in the chat, so... I think people are uh, consuming what you said and not having any questions, so that's great. Yeah, it's funny how I look, it's 10.50. I'm, it's, <laughs> I can go on and on with these walkthroughs about option view. Uh, uh, it seems indefinitely, so I always have to kind of reel it back in and be like, oh, my gosh, I'm taking up a lot of time. So, But it's, it's so robust, and because of that, that's, I mean, there's always plenty to talk about, and I hope it was helpful. Well, you know how it is. If a tool is really simple and easy to learn, then it's probably not as powerful. So... 
Option View has many, many things in it. It takes a while to figure out, but it's definitely worth it, and it has so much capability. It's, um, I don't know, I can't imagine not using it. Yeah, and I just want to just want to put it out there too, is we're always available. I mean, um, I've got a walkthrough scheduled this afternoon with someone that's just getting in, involved with Option View. It seems like I used to do more walkthroughs uh, when I first started here. Uh, you know, almost over seven years now, but um, it's. It, Maybe it's because the videos are so well, but we're available. We have some nice remote in software built into Option View now. So if someone wanted to do a, a little walkthrough, don't hesitate to uh, to call your product consultant over here. And um, you know, I usually like to spend 30 or, or 45 minutes with somebody because after that they start to forget what you talked about at the beginning. But it's real because it's one on one, and uh, you can find out what the uh, person is really trying to get out of Option View. You can zero in on those topics and spend time explaining it with them. So don't hesitate to call anybody if you or email us if you want to set up a, a personal walkthrough, uh, even if you have a trial. Absolutely. All right. Well, I really appreciate it. Uh, and um, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll have more people watching the recording. So again, uh, if you have questions, go ahead and contact Option View. And James, really appreciate the time. And uh, Jim, too, uh, thanks for coming. Really appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much, Tom. Thanks, everybody. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.